On this week's show, Peloton is starting deliveries of the Tread Plus, and lots of instructors are hosting meet and greet and virtual events. Plus, a new Peloton Originals section of Peloton Entertainment, a documentary about Susie Chan running Badwater, and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, John Pruitt and John Mills. Welcome to episode 162 of Pelo Buddy TV. I'm Chris Lewis, joined this week by our special guest co host, John Mills. John, how you doing? Doing good, Chris. How's it going? It's going great. We appreciate you, you know, jumping in this morning and uh, helping us out here. Oh, absolutely. Anytime. You know, I enjoy this. This is the good stuff. You know, the rest of the day, you know, I'm I'm working and I got customers, internal customers on the job and they're pinging me about stuff, you know, that you know, I care <laughs> little about. So this sure, is better. Sure. It's the stuff you have to care about, right? Yeah, I have to care. I have to act like I care. But you know, this is <laughs> well, well, for anyone confused, no, we are not John Pruitt and Amanda. They are both, actually both in New York this weekend at Peloton Studios New York. So they're having a great time up there. Um, they're running around the studio. I'm seeing a couple pictures of them already. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, John Mills is the, the host of the Connected Fitness Forum. He's the founder of the Alex Brienne Corp. He runs the Run, Lift, and Live group. Um, so if you're wondering who John is, he's guessed with, with us before, but that's a little bit about uh, who John is here. I appreciate that. I appreciate You know, I'm, I'm actually, I have a meeting uh, relative to the Alex Brand Corporation about an um, event we're scheduling down in New Haven, Connecticut, later today. So I'm driving down to New York. I can just keep going. Go there you go. Amanda and them. If the <laughs> meeting ends early, just keep on going. Just keep driving that way. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, before we get started with the news, um, we like to remind everyone that you can find us on social media. We're on Pillow Buddy on pretty much every platform out there. Um, if you're listening to this, you probably know where to find us, but we're on all podcast networks. We're on YouTube. Um, just search for Pillow Buddy TV and you can like, subscribe. And then if you love the show, just leave us a review. We love to get those reviews. Um, it really helps us out. And with that, let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. Our first story this week is one that a lot of members have been waiting for, but the Tread Plus deliveries are finally starting. Peloton sent out an email to members who pre-ordered the Tread, letting them know that they would be starting in the next two weeks. Um, and following that email, they actually sent out other emails to specific people saying, hey, you can schedule your delivery. So even though that email said in the next two weeks, some people were able to get deliveries in the next few days. I saw one email of someone who was able to get a delivery of January 29th. Um, so that's this upcoming Monday or Tuesday. So they're going to start going out there pretty quickly. Um, they did say that some will take until April to get delivery. So I think that email saying we're starting uh, was just kind of preempt the I saw so-and-so got an email, why didn't I? So they sent out one email okay. to everyone saying we're starting, but it'll take till April. They did say that the order of who gets theirs is going to be based on two factors. One, which is pre-ordered delivery date. So those who ordered earliest should be towards the front of the line, but it's also going to be based on the units available in their area. So if they only sent two units to Idaho it's going to take a little bit longer for people to get theirs. And then someone who ordered later in, let's say New York, where they might have a lot more, you know, they might get out to some people quicker and the delivery order might seem to not be strictly following the pre-order process, but that's kind of why that's going to be happening. They, um, quick question. They, you have to have submitted that you wanted a guard. Right. You, so they're this, not going to send it to anybody to have a this, Tread Plus. This is for the um, new orders of the Tread Plus of people oh, the, who oh, have pre-ordered. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Completely uh, separately, but gotcha. for the for the rear guard, I do believe what for. So for anyone wondering, if for someone who had a Tread Plus from before the recall, you were able to re return it and get a refund, or you could wait and get the rear guard. They've now started delivery of the rear guard to those owners. I do believe you had to input your information for you to be on that list. 
I think right. you can still get on that list. You're just going to be back at, at the back of the line. But right. they have started the delivery of those to current customers as well. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're talking about the delivery of the Tread Plus and the new orders of it. Yeah, I've got a few people. You know, I remember early on, uh, you know, last year and prior, there were a lot of folks that were really excited about, you know, the, the, the Tread. And, um, uh, and then, but, but we're saying, like, I don't really need that Tread. But now that the Tread Plus has dropped, there's a, there's a lot of folks I know now, they're going, I want the Tread Plus now. Like, now I want to order that. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen some people like, yeah, I've seen some people like, I'd love to get it, but I've got the baby Tread. And right. if, I could do a, if I could do a trade-in, I'd consider it. But right. they're not, they've, at, they've said at this time, they're not going to be doing a trade-in. So you'd have right. to sell it on the secondary market and get rid of it that way. So it makes it a little more complicated of a decision for people in that scenario. Yeah, but I understand. I mean, I love, I love my trip. I, I, I can't imagine getting rid of it. So I understand their dilemma. I get yeah, it. Yeah, Barry is, Barry McCarthy has said in some earnings call that like the Tread Plus is the most well-loved product that Peloton has ever had. Like, gotta the, be. Yeah, like the satisfactory ratings on those is off the chart. He, right. You know, he said that like, People will say, no, you cannot take this from me. Right. Like, you will not get this out of my house. So, yeah. yeah. The, the one bad piece of news is that uh, what they were initially offering a $1,000 discount on it. So it's five nine 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 point nine nine or six thousand dollars essentially and for the first month or so they were offering a thousand dollars off that right. discount hasn't expired unfortunately so if you're looking to buy it at this point it's going to be the full six thousand dollars plus taxes and fees plus right. you do need to get the warranty on it yeah, um, right. so you're going to be looking at seven thousand dollars or so all in on that i understand what barry's saying though i mean i got mine i went out to ces when they were announcing the Tread Plus so that I could see it announced. Mm -hmm. And I ordered it from Vegas, the pre-order. Um, and it has truly been my most favorite. You know, I've got the bike. I got the bike plus. Like, it has been my most favorite Peloton product. And yeah. my whole family has benefited from it. We still use it religiously. So I understand that. Yeah, it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Yeah. Well, uh, keeping on the topic of the Tread Plus, another update that people who already own it will be happy about is that Lane Break has actually started to roll out for the Tread Plus. Um, it's uh, kind of a slow rollout. I've seen a couple people who have it, and I think over the next week it's going to be coming out to everyone. Um, this first came out in June of 2023, last year, for those who have the smaller, newer Tread. Um, but at the time it was not available for the tread plus because that was still under the recall and they were not putting new features out there. Now that they've started to sell it again, they're kind of getting all those features back out there. Uh, at the end of last year, they put the auto incline out there. Um, and now they're getting the, uh, lane break video game out there. So that's good news for people who have that tread plus. I'm interested also in like, you know, how, um, um, popular lane break was on the bike. And how popular it'll be on the I'm not much of the gamer type. Like, I literally go in, do my specific workout. I'm out, and I have, like, my specific kind of plan in my mind, which rarely, if ever, includes, like, uh, you know, gaming. But I got to assume there are some people that like that. Mm -hmm. but I, I, don't have, I don't have, like, a, a, a finger, a pulse on, like, how popular is, like, lane break? You know? Yeah, you can go in there and you, they've got leaderboards for the levels. So you can kind of go and see how many people have taken them. I've not looked yeah. at that in a while, but that might be one way to get kind of a yeah. finger oh, yeah. on it. And one one thing that's different from bike to um, tread is that they actually use that auto incline feature. So there's oh, some parts of the oh. game where if you opt into it, it will actually increase the hill for you as one of the lanes and challenges Probably. you can do. So that was part of the reason they needed to get that auto incline out there first was so right. that they could then use that for lane break on the tread plus. Right. Right. Well, that's really cool. I, yeah. I, I think it's really cool. I mean, I, I every, every time I hear about this, they're like, I gotta try that. And then I never do. I got <laughs> well, it. There, it's there when you want to now. So now you have right. the choice. I got the choice. Check it out. Cool. All right. Um, well, Peloton has launched the latest content section of Peloton Entertainment. This time, it's not a third-party streaming provider. It's called Peloton Originals. It's a brand new option of Peloton Entertainment. 
Um, there, people will be able to find classic content and documentaries filmed and produced by Peloton's own content team. These are videos that have also been aired on other channels, such as Peloton's own YouTube channel or through Peloton Homecoming features. Peloton has not yet promoted the new uh, portal widely, instead mentioning it when talking about the new Badwater 135 documentary video. For the initial launch, there are six different classes available, three unique series. One is a four-part series, and the videos are the Badwater 130 video, which is a 30-minute class highlighting Susie uh, Chan's running of the Badwater 135 Ultra Marathon. Four different videos covering Bex Gentry um, and our Olympic Marathon time trials. These videos are called the Roadmap Bex Journey. And um, a, a series called, or a class called Together, Allie Love and Usher. Allie Love and Usher sat down and had some conversation during Homecoming 2021. Peloton Originals are available on Bike, Bike Plus, Tread, Tread Plus, and the Peloton Row. One thing to keep in mind, these classes work like other Peloton Entertainment workouts, uh, meaning you, you have to start the, the video. There will be a separate start button at the top of the screen. You'll need to press to record your workout. Once you do that, your metrics will be recorded and stored in your workout history. Um, but no matter which Peloton original class you take, it'll be listed in your profile simply as a Peloton entertainment workout. So it won't be specific. Um, so you can't tell from there if the class you took was a Peloton original class or you know some show you saw on Disney Plus. But it sounds pretty cool though. I mean, I, I like the idea of, I like the idea of having um, a more um, defined like documentary type content series section as if you could start using that to produce other types of material kind of sounds interesting you know yeah and i think this like it makes perfect sense for peloton entertainment like if you can go to youtube or you can go to disney plus why can't you go to special peloton stuff so it kind of right. fits in there but along the lines of what you're talking about like they have all these instructor meet and greets and talks and special what events eat? Why can't they put the videos of those up here so that even if you can't go or you don't get a spot, you can still watch the Q&A with Andy and uh, Dennis or right. one of the panels they're doing. So it doesn't have to be super well, like the ones they've done so far, they're super well produced. They're like right. Netflix documentaries, right? right? So they're like really well done. But there's mm -hmm. no reason you can't have the other. It's our instructor Q&A up there as well. That's I think that point. would make perfect sense to fit in. In that section too. I, right. I mean, that's a, that's to me that is um, a program. That is a mm -hmm. that's like a that's like a TV program. Like to me, I got gotcha. you. I, I agree. Those two. I like the whole thing, and then I keep hearing all these great things about Susie Chan Badwater. I mean, everybody's raving over that thing. I got. I haven't yeah. seen it. I gotta check it. Out. So, uh, so th that came out this week, and it's a 30-minute documentary that was released uh, kind of talking about Susie's Badwater 135 adventure, which she did last year. Um, it's available both in that Peloton and original section of Peloton Entertainment, but it's also actually available in the Scenic section as a Scenic class. Um, okay. There is a badge for this class, but to get the badge, you actually – you have to take the scenic version of the class. You can't take the Peloton originals version of the class. So if you love badges, make sure to go to the scenic section on your tread, which unfortunately it's only on the tread because it's a scenic class. Sorry to clarify. The scenic version is only available on the tread. The Peloton originals version is available on all platforms. It's also on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's a 30 minute documentary talking about Susie and her Badwater 135. It talks about her prep work, how she had to go and do heat training, um, yep. how she worked with her crew, how she got through the race. Um, it's very well done. Um, it really kind of shows what she went through and her work to get ready for that. Um, and just highlights what a crazy accomplishment that is. I think at one point, I think it was... Bex. So they interview some of the Peloton instructors during it. They interview some Peloton members during it as well. Um, but I think Bex at one point points out that more people have climbed Mount Everest than who have done the Badwater 135 marathon. Wow. So that's just a crazy accomplishment. Wow. That is, that's, that's some wild stuff right there. That, that's, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Everybody keeps talking about, I keep hearing about how amazing that thing um, that documentary was and her accomplishments were and 
Yeah, I, I got to check that out. <laughs> Yeah, they, they wrap it up by pointing out about so there's something called the Badwater Cup or the Badwater um, series, and it's by doing all three of the Badwater events in one calendar year. There's a 50 mile race, there's an 85 mile race, then there's this 135 mile race that ends with. Um, and she did all three last year, and in doing so, she became the first non American to finish that series. Um, wow. So that was just another great thing. And one uh, one other cool thing about the documentary, while she was doing the actual race last year, um, her group, the Suzy Striders, they kind of organized what they called the Striderthon. Um, mm -hmm. And they planned it out so that while Suzy was running, there was going to be someone from the group running at the same time as her at all points through all hours. And they kind of organized this group uh, marathon to go along with her. And they were, they highlighted that in the documentary and interviewed some of the team about that. So that, and Susie talked about it as well and how that gave her extra motivation knowing that, you know, when she was out there at three thirty AM, right. 28 hours into the race, she knew that someone was running somewhere in the world with her. Right. Peloton is holding a one day contest to give away four free race entries into the 2024 United Airlines, New York city half marathon. So far, this content contest has only been promoted via Peloton Studios Instagram stories. The marathon will take place on March 17th, 2024, and members completed a Google form to receive a chance to win. This is a one-day contest, and the deadline to enter was 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on January 25th. Requirements were that you must be an existing Peloton member, at least 18 years of age, and residing within the United States. There was a questionnaire that asked questions like, what motivates you to exercise? Why is this race important or special to you? And how has Peloton helped support your journey? There'll be four winners. Winners will be selected based on criteria such as embodiment of the Peloton community and values, originality, and responsiveness to the questionnaire. The awardees will be notified via email and will need to respond within 10 days. Prizes include only the race bib. It does not include any travel, lodging, or any additional costs. And as you may know, back in October of 2023, Peloton announced a multi-year partnership with the New York Roadrunners, which is the organization that organizes the New York City Marathon. This appears to be an offering related to that. So good luck to anyone who entered. That's kind yeah, of this cool. was a, a real quick contest. Like they posted it at noon or so on, I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. And you had until Thursday night at midnight to enter. They only posted it in a story. Right. Like it was a, a quick turnaround. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that seems like it. Like it was really, really, really quick. And um, it, I, I would assume whomever, there's a lot of people in the community that run these marathons now, right? It's a lot mm -hmm. of people. I got a lot of friends running these marathons and promoting running more of these marathons. So I would assume that was probably well received. Yeah, and they did something similar for the New York City, the full one in the fall, because they announced that partnership in, I don't know, August or September maybe. Yeah. Um, and they gave away four bibs to that, but that was like, are you ready to do a full marathon in six weeks if you win this thing? Um, <laughs> you know, there's a... There's right. two months ahead of this one, and it's a half instead of a full. Right. So it seems like a bigger group might be at a point where in two months they're ready to run a half. So you, right. they might have seen a couple more entries in this one. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like the alignment of I, – I like the idea of we're doing connected fitness. A lot of it is based in equipment that's in our homes. But now there's a connection to, like, external – any type of external – fitness based event like i like mm -hmm. that with peloton yeah. i think that makes a lot of sense so definitely cool yeah uh well peloton's uh speaking of events and getting out there um it was the other way around for this story lululemon who peloton has a five-year partnership with actually brought three of their coaches to peloton studios new york and they taught an in-person class from peloton studios i thought i thought this was pretty interesting um, it was invite only for the Lululemon studio members, and it was kind of a final celebration of the community because this past week, uh, Lululemon stopped doing their live mirror classes. So all of their coaches across the platform were teaching their last live to members classes. And this was kind of bringing some of them and the, um, and the members into the studio, um, just to get together, um, 
you know, when we posted it, several people were like, I wonder if this means they're going to be, these three might be joining Peloton. Yeah. Um, and they were asked about that and they, all three of them, I believe specifically said, no, we're not. While we might love to Peloton's not hiring right now. And two of them, I think have said, you can go find us on this app. You can go find me teaching at Barry's. You can find me doing such and such. So like if they were doing Peloton, I don't think they'd be like, Oh yeah, I'll be at Barry's next week if the real right. plan was for them to be at Peloton. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that's um, kind of tough, right? Because I saw some kind of some of the emotional kind of things that went on with those instructors after those classes. Like it, like they're moving on to something else, and it was like a you know a little bit of a um, you know bittersweet that yeah they're here teaching in at Peloton Studios in front of these you know. Uh, adorning members but now it's like that whole thing is over that um that's too bad i kind of hoped that it was um an event that was uh uh initiating like they may be a part of the peloton community but yeah i guess not i mean maybe part of that was now that some of the members have been to the studios those members will tell their friends and more people will go you know right. speaking of the bittersweet uh when geraldine who um is part of your community as well she shared the invite with us and she actually ended up getting to go to the class so right. she was posting some videos and stuff and like you said there was really just that it's the end of an era type feeling to it yeah um she I don't believe that these were recorded for the Peloton platform or anything, but who knows what they might do with those classes. Right. right. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. Well, just a random small note that many of the instructors have been sharing some behind the scenes of some photo shoots that are going on. So they've been in the studio and in different photo shoots, just, you know, on the bike, on the tread, doing those glamour shots and getting um, photo shoots for who knows what. Yeah, maybe it's just a website refresh. Maybe it's new photos in the app. Maybe there's new. We, we don't know, but they're just, you know, getting new pictures ready for whatever they need them for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always, you know, watch those photo shoots. It, they they seem like they're having a lot of fun, like, shooting, you know. And I guess it would be kind of cool, right? I did one food photo shoot once, and I was, like, so uncomfortable. It just is not me. It just I, isn't. Yeah, not me either, but I'm also not someone who's I, – I feel like if you're teaching classes to millions of members, right. you know, a day, that's probably right. yeah. pretty standard for your wheelhouse there. Right, so. yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. Cool. Well. On Thursday, February 15th, Peloton will be holding a virtual Black History Month community event entitled Cultivating Community. The event will be hosted by Tunde Oyene, Jess Sims, and Kristen Ferguson. Peloton describes it as an engaging and thought-provoking panel discussion celebrating Black History Month by exploring the significance of friendship and a strong support system. Tunde, Jess, and Kirsten will bring their unique perspectives and experiences as they delve into the vital role of genuine connections, shared experiences, and unwavering support in fostering personal and collective success. Peloton also says it's an opportunity to reflect, learn, and celebrate the strength that comes from the bonds of friendship within the rich tapestry of Black history and culture. The event will occur again on Thursday, February 15th, 2 p.m., to 245 so it's a 45 minute event you must rsvp for this event i'm assuming they just like send you email you a link after the rsvp i'm not really sure um but the rsvp link can be found on the pillow buddy website yeah that sounds pretty cool i got an email i I clicked and i went through an rsvp so yeah i'm interested in it so it'd be cool Yeah, I mean, they've been doing a lot of in-person events, but it is great for them to do these virtual events, too, because not everyone can make it to Minneapolis for an event, and there's only so many people that can get into a showroom, so anyone who's at their computer can do this one, but it's like we were talking about, even if you're working during the day and can't make it, this is the type of content that'd be great to see in Peloton Originals one day. I Um, that's true, Yeah. yeah. You know what I like? I also like that when you you RSVP for these things, they're, 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 um, asking you for potential questions that you Mm -hmm. may want to ask so then you know the member has an opportunity if they do have a specific question about the topic or for the instructor you you throw that in your rsvp and they might actually ask the question yeah they've they've done a couple of these and they've done a pretty good job about making sure they do get to a couple of those member questions yeah um so it's a great chance like you said to get your question answered possibly yeah that's cool cool stuff so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to that one also, Peloton and Chase Bank 
are back with their latest exclusive offering for Chase Sapphire members. This time, it's a special class at Peloton Studios New York with Cody Rigsby, taking place on February 23rd. Those who sign up will get access to a 30-minute live class with Cody and a photo afterwards. The cost is 3,500 Chase uh, points or $35. The event filled up fairly quickly, but a wait list is available in case cancellations happen. The wait list link can be found on the Pella Buddy website. Chase members found out about this opportunity through an email advertising that they could explore a whole new year of card member events. The email also teased that there will be additional classes throughout 2024. While this class is closed uh, to in-studio participants who aren't Chase Fastbar card um, holders, it will still air live and be available on demand like all other Peloton classes. Last year, Peloton and Chase renewed their ongoing partnership through 2025. In addition to their points accelerator program and occasional special events, Peloton also periodically offers Chase exclusive in-person classes such as this at Peloton Studios New York. So far, there have been a cycling class with Robin Arzon, as well as a cycling class with Matt Wilpers. Chase and Peloton also teamed up to offer several special classes during All for One weekend. Peloton has also hosted special in-person classes with Bex Gentry, Selena Samuela, and Selena Samuela in Las Vegas last year. I like the whole idea of the Chase Sapphire stuff. I don't have a Chase Sapphire card. I didn't quite understand. I, before, I thought it was like a very specific kind of um, Peloton only type deal with Chase Sapphire. I know you mm -hmm. explained it to me like, no, it's broader. That's one of the the offerings that you kind of get along with other things, um, you know, uh, aligning to this with the Sapphire card. So yeah, I don't, now I'm kind of thinking, okay, maybe, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, for everyone at home, like there's nothing out of the ordinary about this class. You're just gonna get on and Cody's gonna be teaching a class, but it just so happens that everyone in the studio is gonna be a Chase Sapphire right. member. Um, the benefit for, you know, Chase members is that, okay, the studio booking fills up super quick. So maybe this is a way that, less people are able to sign up. So maybe I can yeah. finally get a class, but it filled up within seconds still anyway. Like by the yeah, time some yeah. people saw the email and opened it, it was already full. Yeah. So this one filled up pretty quickly that way too. And, and the opportunity to go, Oh, I can, I can pay my pay for it. at these points I just happen to have on my card. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if you don't pay with the points, it's the same $35 as it would be if you went through the studio website. So right. it's not, technically a cost savings because they're treating a point as a cent so it goes that way but it's just gotcha. a different route to kind of get a chance at that booking right right that's cool that's good stuff yeah well uh more instructor meetups callie adrian and chelsea are going to be at the mall of america as we shared last week they're heading out there for some special lululemon classes at the store there um there was a sign up last week and you can do an in-person class at the mall of america there um, and then there are some meet and greets around those events as well. Well, Peloton Studios announced this week that in addition to that, the day before, they're going to do a free mocktail meetup at the Peloton showroom in Bloomington. So you were able to sign up. You could go meet the instructors, get a photo. So if you missed out on the Mall of America event, um, this was a way to do a meet and greet the day before. There are no classes associated with this one. It was a standard just instructors going to the store to do a meet and greet. But since they're out that way, they kind of added a second meetup the day before for people who might have missed out on the Lululemon stuff. Oh, that's cool. I remember back in the day, they would have the meet and greets, and you'd go to some of them, and there'd be, like, these lines, like, out of the store to get into these the meet and greets. <laughs> I think it might be like that a little bit still, but yeah. they're, they're limiting the number to make sure that everyone who signs up has the chance to get their meet and greet and photo. So there might yeah. still be a line, but they're designed that even if there is a line, you're going to get in there, you're going to get to say, hey, and get, yeah. get a quick photo with them. That's, that, 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 that's better. Like now you got to kind of have to be, you know, RSVP'd in. Because, yeah, I mean, I remember back in the day, like anybody, they, well, the truck is going to be at this this particular showroom and there wasn't anything like that. So then they, it would just get flooded yep. and there would just be lines all out. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. I'm glad. I'm, yeah. I'm sure people are going to love that. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Peloton has shared the full details of the final artist series of January fe featuring pop icon pink. Peloton shared the news via their Instagram um, page saying, think pink. 
It's the artist series you've been dreaming of, a broad range of classes powered by bold hits and bright anthems to push you further. The series will begin on Thursday, January 25th, and will include 14 classes across seven modalities, including two classes in Spanish and four classes in German, as well as two for, a two-for-one run. Oh, that's cool. There will be a mix of pre-recorded um, and on-demand drops, numerous premieres, and plenty of live classes. You can find the complete class list at PeloBuddy.com. This will be the second official Peloton Artist Series for Pink. The first one took place in 2019, and those classes are still available in the on-demand library. Members will receive an Artist Series badge for taking any of the Pink classes. And a, rem and a reminder, you can browse all of the various badge opportunities via our guide, along with a complete overview of Peloton's previous Artist Series on the PeloBuddy.com website. Yeah, you know, when I, I saw the artist, I, did, I didn't remember the 2019 Pink It's been a minute. Series. I didn't remember that. I thought it was the first time they were doing it. And then someone reminded me, no, 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 there's another one. And back then, artist series didn't always, they weren't as big as they are now. Like this one yeah. has 14 classes. That right. one had three. So they kind of make a bigger deal out of some of them now than they used to as well. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, people love Pink Boy. I mean, they love it. My, <laughs> My sister loves pink and uh, and like yeah, goes to a lot of the shows and so yeah this this that's I'm sure people are gonna love this. Yeah, I've heard from a couple of people who've taken the classes and they all said they were great. Um, and like you said, one of them's a two for one. It's in German, but it's uh, Jeffrey McEachern and, and Tobias Hines got together to teach a two for one tread class. So you know those two for one classes are always great to kind of yeah. get to know some of the instructors if you don't always take them. Yeah, um, it's a good chance to sample two instructors at the same time. So yeah, the un uniqueness of the two for one. I think you just hear two for one, and people go, "Oh yeah," they get excited. <laughs> yep, and they're so <laughs> rare. You know, there's right. only a couple yeah. of years, so it's just right. something new and different always. Right. Yeah, I like the two for ones. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a sneak peek at the artist series that are going to be coming up in February this week. Um, at the end of the month, Peloton always puts the uh, the artist series classes for the next month available for booking on the studio website. And through that, you're kind of able to figure out what those series are going to be. Um, so next month on February 8th, there's going to be an artist series with Timbaland. On February 15th, there's going to be a series with Green Day. On February 22nd, there's going to be a series with Nicki Minaj. And on February 29th, there's going to be an artist series with Fatboy Slim. And similar to what you were saying with Pink, two of these are actually returning artist series. Um, both Green Day and Nicki Minaj have had a previous artist series. And this is kind of the, a new set of those for both of those artists. Oh, cool. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 um, I like a lot of Nicki Minaj's music and... Um, Green Day and like so, so all this stuff. Yeah, this sounds like good stuff. Yeah. Like well, this week we also had several instructors return who have been gone for um, injuries and various reasons. Jen Sherman came back on Tuesday and she taught two back-to-back -back classes. We had Alex Karwalski come back and he taught his first class on Monday and he's been on the schedule many times this week. And Anna Greenberg kind of had her first full um, yoga series back on the mat. Um, she'd been away after breaking her toe. So we've had Many of the instructors make their returns this week and get back to their normal schedule. So I know a lot of people were happy to see some of their favorite instructors um, back on the schedule. Yeah, you know, when instructors are all of a sudden not on the schedule, you know, rumors start flying all around like crazy. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, well, a, rumors, but yeah. a good example of that was, you know, Alex. So we shared the other week, he broke his hand, but for a while yeah. he hadn't really said anything. He was just right. off the schedule. And then they announced that Bex Gentry was going to start teaching rowing and Alex still hadn't said anything yet. Right. And I've seen all these posts of like, wait, does that mean Alex is quitting because Bex is <laughs> right. joining? And right, right. You know, Alex just isn't on social media much. So he just didn't right. even think maybe I should post that I'm off the schedule because I broke my hand. He just right. didn't do that you know right. so and rumors got started and but you know he, he's not going anywhere he's back and right yeah yeah you gotta imagine that i mean these are people that are in fitness they're doing um they're they're doing physical you know stuff all the time um you're gonna get injured yep i know i'm injured all the time sometimes i'm just working out through an injury which i probably <laughs> shouldn't but <laughs> but but yeah, they're going to get injured and sometimes they're going to be down. Yeah, so it just that's how it works. Yep. Cool. All right. What do we got? Um, Peloton instructor Katie 
Wong teased in a recent class pre-show that she will be making an announcement on Friday, January 26th. In the pre-show portion of her live 30-minute lower body row boot camp on January 23rd, Katie stated, Well, I can't actually tell you, but I will tell you that I have a fun announcement on Friday coming. I'm going to leave it at that. Though not confirmed, it seems very likely Katie is going to announce that she is going to teach Peloton strength classes and that she is joining the strength roster. Katie already teaches strength as part of row boot camp classes, which alternate between the row, rower and the strength mat. However, Katie does not teach regular strength classes at, at this point. So this would, be, uh, this would presumably be a natural progression and would also introduce her to members who do not own a row or have access to rowing equipment. In addition, yeah. a strength instructor, Callie Gullickson, is preparing to go on maternity leave, which will leave a vacancy on the strength team until she returns later this year. Katie previously shared in December that she was working on a special project. She posted a video to Instagram about a day in her life and explained that she was doing audio only and video filming for a special project. <laughs> yeah, you know, the getting, I like the, what, you, what you had stated about um, access to other members who might not see you because they don't have a rower. Yes, yeah, especially you know. for the row, because so that's the newest thing, and there's a lot less people who have it than the bike right. rate treads. So, you know, sometimes when I post about what the row instructors are doing, people are like, is that, a, who's that instructor? And right. you know, they're one of the row instructors, but this gives them a chance to branch out yeah. um, and get seen. And, you know, Jess Sims the other week in her Reddit AMA talked about how there might be more floor boot camp classes coming mm -hmm. and maybe a new program. Mm -hmm. That might be where we're seeing Katie. You know, that's a strength discipline. It's a new pro program. So I could see her possibly, you know, teaching some classes in a floor boot camp program right? Um, and just kind of dipping her toes into the other strength classes that way. Yeah. You know, it, it, to, to the point you were mentioning earlier, like, like I know the names, I know, like, I know kind of who they are and the faces, mm -hmm. but I don't really know them because yeah, I don't have a rower. Yeah. So I'm not really taking those classes. So, um, yeah, like I like the, the crossover and the and the, and the greater exposure. That, that sounds really cool. Yeah, one thing that you can do for anyone out there, because, you know, there's challenges out there. We have one on our website to try to take every instructor in the year, just kind of get familiar with them. All of them at this point do now have uh, post-row or pre-row stretches. So even if you don't have a row, um, you can always try out one of those pre- or post-row stretches. You don't need the row to do that. Just, you know, oh, gotcha. do it before yeah. one of your tread or bike workouts to just kind of right. try one of the new coaches out. Yeah, absolutely. That's always a good idea to try the new coaches. You find out, you know, who might fit. You yeah, know, your lifestyle, your your temperament, your mindset, you know, better, yep. right? Like, to, yeah, that's absolutely cool. Well, Peloton announced on their Peloton Studios Instagram account that Callie Gullickson will be teaching low impact cardio classes. The announcement was well received on Instagram, with followers responding with comments such as, "I can't wait," and "So excited about the low impact cardio classes with Callie." The first class will drop on demand on Friday, January 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'm sure a lot of people are going to check that out. That's, well, yeah, that's, that's the time of our recording. Yep. <laughs> We're missing it. We're missing it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also catch that. Well, there's an on-demand drop, so we'll catch that oh, on-demand either way. We can, so. That's right. Catch yeah. it on demand. You're right. But I know people are excited about that. People really love Rebecca's low impact cardio classes. So having someone right. else teach those means there'll be more of them out there for people to take. So I know some of them are hidden only in the collection. Yeah. So you might not find them or see them if you're just browsing the regular on demand library. So we'll, we have a link on our website that you can find the collection and those classes if you've never stumbled across it before. Ooh, low impact. That's what I need. Low impact. Oh my gosh. Yep. I, I, I got, I got so many injuries. I can't do anything. There's any type of high impact anymore. <laughs> and some of those can be high impact. So this is a good, you know, if you need to change it up and take it easy, these are worth trying out for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Well, uh, Peloton has been busy this week and they've actually released four different commercials through their YouTube channel and they're starting to get on various platforms. 
Uh, we had one focused on the bike, which had Camila Ramon. Um, and it kind of featured both the Spanish and English content that Peloton now has available. Um, you had Rad Lopez featured talking about the Peloton app and how you don't need the hardware. Um, you had Jess Sims featured on the tread, which kind of featured the Peloton entertainment stuff as well. And then you had a more general um, commercial that kind of just went across all classes, had six different instructors in there. So it had been a minute. To, since we had had new commercials and ads and now all of a sudden four of them dropped at once. So it's, you know, you'll be seeing them pop up on different places. If you watch TV, you know, thrown in there, maybe in your web ads, you might see them, but there's four different ones out there now. You know, it feels like yeah, they're much more deliberate about advertising and, and it, it feels like it's much broader. Um, I see it more. Maybe it's just a time of the year. I know it's still busy season through what April. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe that's it. But I just feel like I I see ads with regards to Peloton much more often than I used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is cool. It's good stuff. Yeah, get the word out there. Right. Car right. Um, on January twenty second, Peloton had an outage where some members were not able to start classes. This impacted members across a variety of devices. Peloton posted a message at around 8.25 p.m. Eastern Time on the 22nd saying, we are currently investigating this issue. And minutes later, at 8.29, an update was posted saying the issue had been identified and a fix was being implemented. And then around 9 p.m., an update was posted st stating that it had been fixed. Um, so it seems like it was just, it seems like it was relatively short, maybe 30, yeah, I think it was 40 like minutes. 30, 40 minutes around yeah. there. So it wasn't terribly long, but you know, there's so many people on Peloton now that you have an outage right. for any period of time. People are going right. to notice it and be impacted. You know, if you've got a 45 minute to window to work out and it's down for 40 of those minutes, that unfortunately right. means you That's might miss your deal. workout for the day. So, yeah. Right. You know, I always forget about, um, the ability to if something is going on to then go to status.onepeloton.com and then you could kind of see like what, what domain, what platform, what product, what, what's happening. And if they know that it's happening, right? Like, <laughs> I yeah, for bigger, that. for bigger outages like that, they've recently been doing a better job of updating those. Um, there's been some smaller things where for whatever reason, incidents don't always get posted or it takes a day or two for that. But, you know, it's always good to check the status page or we try to post it on our social media as well when we hear those outages is another uh, just letting people know. Right. Yeah. I think it's, if, if they can get it there, I think, yeah, it's a useful yeah. tool. And pro it probably could save on calls if people actually use that and don't check. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, speaking of outages, there was a um, another one this week, but this one was related to power zones and FTP training. Um, just a little backstory um, or context for those who don't aware. Power zones, you have to enter what's called your FTP, which you um, get by taking a 20-minute class. You enter that into Peloton system, and that kind of sets your power zones for you, which displays there's a bar on the screen. And as you're riding, that just kind of tells you what zone you're in. There was a random bug that happened this week. I think it started late Tuesday night or early Wednesday where some people were riding and they noticed their zones were lower than they were supposed to be. Um, and it turns out that, so when you take that 20-minute test, you multiply that by 95% and that's your FTP. Um, so it's kind of, you know, taking that as an average. Well, it looks like that Peloton had, for some people, taken another 95% of that, and that had been updated as their FTP. So it wasn't, like, super off, but it was enough that some people noticed it. Um, I heard some other people who, it didn't take a 95%, but it actually rolled them back to a previous FTP test. So that might have been more off. Um, we shared about it on Wednesday night, and at the time, Peloton hadn't posted an outage yet, but we'd seen lots of reports. Um, sorry, we posted about that Thursday night, and Peloton hadn't posted a status yet. On Friday morning, Peloton did post an official status message for it, um, it and they uh, said it was already fixed, actually. They said a fix has been implemented for an issue that members saw after manually entering their FTP leading towards incorrect FTP values. We are monitoring the results. So hopefully as of time of recording and when people are doing their long power zone rides over the weekend, that was resolved and it was all back to normal. But for a day or two, people were, you know, trying to figure out what was happening and to fix it, you had to go in and enter your FTP score manually back to what it should be. Um, but hopefully that's all cleared up now. 
Awesome. And I mean, just the, the idea of, you know, F FTP training is a concept of, you know, you're trying to get more um, direct and concrete on what the effectiveness of your training is. So the folks that are doing that, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a problem. <laughs> if there's if there's any group that's going to notice their numbers being a little They're bit off, it's that. it's power okay. zone trainers because you're staring at those numbers. Like when you're doing right. a power zone ride, you are staring at that FTP bar for an right. hour, making sure right. you're staying between 125 and 142. So if you right. get on the next ride and you see that it says 120 to 135, right. it's only seven different, but you're you might notice that so yeah if anybody's gonna notice it, it would be the folks that do that so i yeah that that makes sense to me um and i and just on an, i guess on another note i think i just i even though i haven't done um power zone in a long while i truly appreciate um the idea of being able to be more refined in what it is you're doing and how you're training and what where you're at like that is um i think it's um in and of itself is, is, is an extremely useful kind of way of training. Yeah, I mean, Peloton, there's what, 7 million people ish, 6 to 7 million people on there. So Peloton can't do personalized one on one coaching. Right. But with Power Zone training, you take the test and then it's your zones personalized for you and the way they coach FTP by calling out the zone it is it right. turns into kind of that personalized training so it's right. with peloton kind of the closest thing you can get to that and i will just make a quick you know another note rowing is kind of the same way you know on the bike oh, if you're okay. not doing power zone they mm -hmm. call out cadence 30 you know 70 to 80 resistance 30 to 40 on the row you've ne you'll hear them call out a stroke rate which is how many strokes per minute mm -hmm. um, but you'll never hear them call out i'm going 400 watts or i am going at a 215 pace they have pace target zones of one to ten which are kind of similar uh, to power zones but yeah on the row every single instructor in every single class calls out those you know um, they call it easy, immediate, moderate, or hard, and that translates to one of your personal zones. Right. Um, so rowing is kind of the same way where you take a test or just set it, and then when they call out moderate, it says you should be going uh, 245 to 315. So it kind of gets personalized to you on the row that same way. I like that. Well, I, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that's good stuff. Mm-hmm. I still haven't gotten a roar, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still contemplating it. And the more I hear about the benefits and, um, and, uh, and you know, there's a lot of folks around me that have rowers and, and, and are taking those classes religiously. So, yeah. And all the new coaches are great. And yeah. the, the, every rowing platform and company who does it loves the stat, but they always say yeah. rowing works 86% of your muscles, you know, so right. that's the, full body workout there if you're doing it right yeah absolutely yeah that's the common thing i hear right about the percentage of like the you know your body that you're working while doing it. well cool all right well peloton experienced an issue with the ios peloton app uh, which prevented some members from being able to log in and take classes beginning january 20th members reported that they were unable to log into their peloton app on apple devices the issue may have been related to the latest software update Essentially, when members attempted to log into their iOS Peloton app, they were unable to do so. Even resetting the password did not resolve the issue. However, members were able to access their Peloton accounts via the web browser or their hardware device, such as the bike, tread, or rope. You know, this was one of those that I didn't see on the, on, on, <laughs> on the support site. Yeah, like I would say, not everyone makes it for some reason. So sometimes it's a mystery what does and doesn't make it um and sometimes you know the ftp one for example nothing got posted till it was fixed right um so it's you know but again bigger outages where like everything is down mm -hmm. there those are typically on there those are gonna be there right yeah 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 yeah, well, uh, moving away from uh, bugs, we had some class purges this week, to nobody's surprise. It's now the ninth month in a row, I think, of those. But last week, Peloton purged the majority of classes from November 25th through December 1st. Um, previous weeks, I think they've been doing around 200 classes each time. This one ended up removing about 100 classes. But this was over the Thanksgiving break in the U.S., so there's typically less classes produced then, so that might just you know, be why there was less classes because they're less recorded. 
as always, there were some classes saved. Um, Power Zone classes were saved. Uh, Kendall's movie buff ride was from this time period that was saved. They did save the majority of the Thanksgiving classes. Uh, there was a Sundays with Love that was saved, and there's a handful of other um, random themed classes that were kept as well. You know, I used to always go in my mind. I'd be like, "Why, why, why purge?" I mean, space is so cheap now. Just keep all the stuff out. Then I realized that I don't know that it's a it's about that. It's about you've mm-hmm. got an interface that has to be able to search and process and, and display whatever it is you're searching for. And like that, you know, that um, that aspect of it would have to be demanding on, you know, all these devices. Like, so I, I guess it makes sense that you, you would, and from, from, I think we talked about this before, the look and feel of some of these the, pr- classes, the production value, the production value, you probably want to stay current ensure that your what you're trying to present what you want the studio to look like what 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 attire the instructors are wearing are consistent to like where you're at at this particular time so like i get it they kind of have to you know pull some things out i mean i think if they could have months ago they would have gotten so they've been doing it on a rolling basis i think if they could have they would have immediately gotten rid of anything not in the new studio right um just to right. you know kind of have that same look that same feel they did right. it they did it in phases they kept some old classes but i do think that's a big part of it is kind of just uniform look better production right. value you know they've over the years they've changed the lighting they've changed the right. audio so kind of staying in line with all of that i look at some of the old stuff that i like recorded you know myself you know, from back in 2016. Yeah, that stuff looks <laughs> mad dated now, Chris. A little bit. A little oh, bit. my goodness. <laughs> but again, it was a uh, very different company back then. It was, you know, well, just think of like how much recording equipment, how much cheaper it is now versus then. Mm-hmm. Like now you right. can, you know, your iPhone that everyone right. has can do eight, not, it can do right. 4K video slow mo. Right. Back then, what would a 4K camera, studio camera have cost? Who knows, you know? Who knows, so. right. Yeah, I mean, it just, I remember going to the studio thinking it just seemed so, um, you know, television quality, just so, the experience was so like, you know, you were in Hollywood. And yep. now I look at it and I'm like, like I feel like we were in a closet or something. <laughs> yep. The, the, the old studio, I mean, even like in 2020 or 2019, the Christopher, mm-hmm. not Christopher Street, the but the old studio um, right, just right. had a totally different feel than the new one does. Yeah, yeah, completely different thing. But yeah, it just didn't feel like that. Now I look at it, you know, you have this comparison. You're like, oh man. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. Well, Peloton is now offering a 50% off sale on select par- Peloton apparel. Peloton is calling it their winter extras sale. You can go to Peloton's um, apparel.onepeloton.com and click the sale drop down to view all the items being offered. You know, I went and checked that out and I noticed that in the drop down, well, you, you go there and of course the banner shows you immediately that yep. here's the 50% off um, winter extra sale. But um, but if you miss the banner because it's scrolling, then you can go to the sale item and drop down. But when I drop down that, I hit that drop down list, there's a list of like, Four sales, so that's just the latest one. But they're like three others. So yeah, it's like, like... It's if they got groupings of things that are like seventy percent off, fifty percent off, thirty percent off, and you can click the, the savings. I guess that you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, it's been a busy, I... busy month of sales they've been having over there. Yeah, yeah, I found that interesting. I'm like, oh wow, and so I, 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 that's interesting because, yeah, at least now um, you can kind of you can kind of go to a specific section. And, and if you're looking at the sales there and you don't like those items, you can just go to this other sales section. Like, I, I think that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. It's a little bit easier to find what you're looking for. And if you're only looking for something on deep discount, you can just look at that section and yeah, right. ignore the 20% off section. Right, right. Yeah. So, And also, I hadn't been out there a little while. And some of that stuff, it does look, you know, I used to be like, like consummate, like crazy by any Peloton attire that came out kind of guy. Yep. And then I went into the lull of, I don't buy anything no more. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and then I went back to, okay, here and there, if it it's appealing to me, maybe. Um, but I, 
but looking out there, just checking out this story, I thought a couple things. I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So, you know, I might yeah. go back out and buy some. Nice. Well, uh, happy birthday to several instructors this week. Uh, ben Aldis, his birthday was on Monday. Uh, Logan Aldridge had a birthday on Thursday. And Kendall's Tools birthday is today. So, happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday. Awesome. Nice. And with that, it is time for Instructors in the News. And I will kick it off with our first story. Uh, so Christine was posting a petition on her social media this week, um, and it's related to, um, her master's track cycling that she does. Um, so many, uh, when they go to these national championships, um, you can either do individual or you can do a team. Um, there's been a recent rule apparently where some of the national events for the teams, they don't allow, uh, mixed teams. So men and women together to form a team. Well, there's not always, depending on your age group, enough people to form a team. So some of the riders aren't able to form a team and actually ride a national. So there's a petition going around asking the organizing body to let mixed teams come back so that more riders can take part in nationals and just get a chance to race and compete for those medals. Um, so the petition is on change.org. We've got a link to it in our show notes. And Christine posted earlier in the week in her social media, kind of requesting people to read it and sign it if they didn't mind. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I didn't know about that. I'm glad you actually mentioned it. I'll have to go to change.org and, um, and select that. I wonder if, like, if you had, like, a, a team, you don't have enough, if if they try to pair you up with somebody else. To do, you know, it makes you wonder. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you'd I'm... want to do that, but, but you know. But, yeah, yeah, it's... yeah. This just seems good for, you know, getting more people out there because some of the races don't might have two teams out there. And if you can get right. four, yeah. it's, you know, you're not yeah. the track's not overflowing with people by doing that. It's just getting another couple people out there racing. You'd think that they would be for it, too, because more entries, more, more, you know, more entry <laughs> fees like you think they would want that. Yeah, apparently it seemed to be related somewhat. So the elite races had this rule. Mm -hmm. And because the elite races had it, they put it in some other categories as well, which might not technically be required, but they just did it to be uniform with the elite. So they're uh, just kind of asking that, sure, keep it for the elite, but not for the, you know, non-elite. Let us right. open it up a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, well, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely go out there and um, sign the change.org petition. That, that's good stuff. And I, always supporting uh, Christine. Um, she's been an amazing friend of mine for a long time. And yeah. um, always very kind to me and, and Erica whenever we were have been in her presence so shout out to christine absolutely Definitely support anything she does yep so cool all right um tunde oyane has been featured in some nike social media posts the posts feature many images of tunde including a video of her underwater while narrating words of motivation uh, she's not doing it at the same time. They're playing a narration, <laughs> and then they're showing her video. Got it, got she's it. She's not talking underwater. That would be impossible. <laughs> that, that would be a, a nice <laughs> trick there. That would be amazing, though. I wouldn't be surprised if she could do it. <laughs> but, all right. So in the post, uh, Nike quotes Tunde saying, in moments of feeling pressure or exhaustion, moments when you don't know what to do next, come back to your breath. Nike continues by saying, from her highest highs to her lowest lows, New York-based global Nike athlete Tunde Oyene, power has always been ignited with an inhale. You can see the post on the Nike Women Instagram account. Uh, you can see it on Tunde's, Tunde's Instagram account. Or you can go to PillowBuddy.com website, and there's a link to it there. The, the, the video is kind of a pr pretty cool. Like, um... You know, anytime you, sh I've seen a lot of like the underwater kind of um, sports-based um, videos. They all mm -hmm. tend to have like some type of power to them because there's like a, you know, the, the slow motion solace to like just yeah. being underwater. Like I think lends well to motivate motivational type context. Absolutely. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. I, I like the ad. Now is this a long game here? And she's te teasing her next book, "Speak Underwater." <laughs> That's right. She's preparing <laughs> us, right? It's a whole different speak. It's yep. Different, you know, different level of speak. <laughs> I, th I thought about that as I was saying, I was like, wait a minute. What I just said sounds like she was narrating underwater. <laughs> no, she's not narrating underwater. My bad. She's just... <laughs> All good. 
Uh, Hannah Corbin has shared an update with us. So we previously shared and she shared that she's uh, go, trying to go back to Broadway and she's been auditioning for some roles. Um, this week, she shared that she's been doing lots of practice and vocal drills and that she's actually now looking for a, a, um, an agent to kind of shop her around to some shows. Um, she did reiterate that she's not leaving Peloton because of this. She's just going to be extra busy and doing two things at once. Um, when she first shared about it, she mentioned that how, when she first started Peloton, she was on Broadway. So she juggled both of those at the same time when she first started. And if she gets a role, she's going to try to do the same thing again. So just a little update from Hannah. She's still practicing, trying out and looking for an agent now. Wow. I always like to see like, you know, where you're like branching off into something that's close to your passion and you just stepping out, you're going to try it. Yep. That's kind of, that's, that's good stuff. Like, well, I we saw Sam late in life, you know, it was kind of late, real late. I took, took me forever. Before I, before <laughs> I did that. But, well, we yeah. saw Sam Yo do something similar over in the UK. Like he took a leave. Well, it was when the London studios was closed. He actually went and played on the West End in a touring show right. for a little bit. So, yeah. you know, that's not unheard of for someone to do this. So Hannah would just yeah. be the next uh, branch out and, you know, double dip. Shout out to Hannah. Yeah, go do that. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's something you want to do, get out there and branch out, try it, see what's up, prepare. Yeah. Who I needs like sleep it. anyway, you know? Yeah, who need? Yeah, it's overrated. It's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So, Ross Rayburn was interviewed on the Headliner Chicago podcast. Uh, Ross's book was just released on January 9th. It's called Turning Inward, the Practice of Introversion for a Calm, Joyful, Authentic Life. In the interview, Ross talks about the value of meditation how he, uh, how, and how he found peace in it. You can find the link to the YouTube interview on the PillowBuddy.com website. You know, I went to it and I checked. Uh, I started watching. I didn't finish it, but I started watching it. And, I, and to be honest, I, I've run into um, Ross a couple times. Um, never really had much conversation with him other than I think I told a joke that wasn't funny once so, and he didn't laugh, but, but, anyway, <laughs> but, uh, but so I don't really know him that well. Um, but when you listen to, in my experience and listening to the portions of the podcast that I, I did there, wow, the depth on the, um, um, and how his mind is interrogating, you know, um, the, the practice of meditation and how he defines it and the different ways he talks about that may be meditation that you might not generally consider meditation, mm -hmm. but he qualifies it as like, it was kind of interesting. That's he's got some depth there. So I encourage anybody who um, would like to learn more about his book or learn about more about him. Um, you know, understand kind of the, these dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah, cool. his book officially came out in the last week or two, so it's now available both paperback and audible. And yeah. you know, there's several people out there who've read all the books, and they I've heard that Ross's is one of the you know it's on the top of one of the better ones. Not that any of them are not good, but they just right. said they enjoyed his um, a lot. So definitely well, yeah, worth a read I mean, or listen. I believe it. I believe it when I when when you. I mean, just I, this is like this isn't like some long um, uh, defined thing, but. But in the podcast, I mean, you get, I get it. I got the message that, that there is a, de a depth of message in what he's talking about here. And I'm yeah. assuming aligns to the books. So, I mean, yeah, check that out. Thanks. Nice. Well, Robin Arzon was a keynote speaker this week. She spoke at the Women's Health and Men's Health Strength and Diversity Summit. Um, so, yeah, congrats to Robin on giving another keynote speech. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's a. You know, that's a talent, like to be, mm -hmm. a, it's a talent in and of itself to be able to be confident enough to kind of relay your, 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 your mindset and life experience in front of people. And then to be, you know, yeah, confident enough and not self-conscious about doing so. So, and that's been Robin for a while. So yeah, shout out to Robin. Yeah. Cool. Um, so Bradley Rose was on the, um, Always Looking Up podcast. On the podcast, Bradley talks about spending the last 10 years in the U.S. working as an actor, appearing in both films and TV shows. After sharing his story, he talks about how he defines being a survivor, how he came into fitness, and become a pel pel becoming a Peloton instructor, and what it means to be a part of the disabled survivor and Peloton communities. 
You can find a link to the podcast on the PelloBuddy.com website. I didn't get to check out as much about, about this one, but the intro and the definition of it is like, oh, wait a minute, what? Yeah, yeah. definitely seems like it's worth a listen. Yeah, yeah, definitely worth a listen. Nice. So, John, I got to ask, you know, I've seen on social media a couple instructors, uh, Mariana, for example, and I know some others, they've been wearing an Alex Brand Corporation sweater, which, as we mentioned in the intro, is actually your nonprofit. And I think sales of that sweater actually go, profits on the sweater go to some of the projects you're working on. So since we have you here, do you mind telling us, you know, for people who might not be aware, a quick intro of the nonprofit and what some of those uh, projects you're working on? right now might be oh wow thank you i appreciate that chris thank you for asking about it yeah well alex brand was my uh is, is my youngest daughter she um uh overdosed on fentanyl uh, um, a little over a year ago and i had been doing um equity activism type work for some time but i w it wasn't formalized and um she survived but she was considered brain dead for a while and um the day we were going to disconnect life support um she started uh, responding. So she's alive wow. um, and has survived. But while we didn't think she was going to survive, I started the Alec Brand Corporation in her name. And it, it's basically a mechanism to fund some of the community-based work that I do around highlighting the, the contributions of the formerly enslaved um, in this country. And, uh, and so um, we've got a lot of projects going on. It's just started to grow. We're constantly fundraising for some of the projects, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, again, we're a nonprofit, a 501c3 um, uh, federal nonprofit. So there's no profit. Mm -hmm. Everything's going towards um, these initiatives. Um, and so, you know, we've got a mural that we're, we're um, working with a company called the Rise Up Group. We're working mm -hmm. with the, the um, the mayor's office of Waterbury, Connecticut, the local NAACP chapter, but we're spearheading a, a mural in Waterbury, Connecticut that will depict this formerly enslaved man in Waterbury. Um, that mural will be unveiled in May. Oh, nice. Um, and so we're really excited about that. I can't wait. I bet. There'll be media coverage on that, so people will get to see that. Um, we're, we're spearheading um, the repair of the headstone of a formerly enslaved man and his wife in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. They had two hmm. sons, both of whom who fought in the Civil War, one with the Connecticut 29th Colored Regiment and the other with the Massachusetts 54th Colored Regiment, which is the same regiment depicted in the movie Glory with Denzel Washington. Wow. Um, and he died in the same battle that's depicted at the end of that movie. Um, but, but his parents' um, headstone broke some 80 years ago it's now like embedded in the earth. You know, it fell over and it's been in the earth. So we're um, spearheading the repair of that. We funded the repair of that. And we've also, since their son who died with the 54th, never got a burial. He, he was buried by the Confederate army in a mass grave mm -hmm. um, in South Carolina. So he never got a headstone. We worked with the Dep uh, U.S. Office of Veterans Affairs to get a memorial headstone for him. And we're going to place that right next to his parents. Nice. And that'll be unveiled um, in June of this year. And so that's a couple of projects. We also have another one in Middletown, Connecticut, where we're renaming a street after a formerly enslaved. We've got one in um, Woodbury, New Jersey, where we're uh, honoring a former uh, Civil War vet and author who has a book in the, mm. the Library of Congress. So it's just a lot of different efforts, of, of, you know, in different states that we've got going on. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to alex3an.org, A-L-E-X-T-R-E-A-N-N-E.org, um, and you'll, you can read about our projects and or donate if you want to support us. Again, it's all nonprofit, so everything that we're doing is all um, funded out of my pocket or out of whatever donations we get. And then, like you said, uh, Mariana Fernandez, um, um, uh, Ali Love, um, uh, Alex, Alex. Um, um and Jess Sims. Um, um, they've just been incredibly kind in uh, purchasing or, or accepting um, the gear and then, you know, wearing it on their social media account, not actually making any statement about, you know, the, the company. I'm sure they can. But at, at minimum, um, it's kind of helped get our efforts out and, and so forth folks have been kind of supporting us in these endeavors so i appreciate it if uh, i appreciate you giving me the moment to talk about it yeah well we'll have a link in the show notes as well so if you're listening and don't remember that url you can go to the show notes and we'll have a link there so you can go to the alex brand corp website and learn a bit more thanks for sharing john thank you so much yeah well with that i think it's time for uh class picks of the week and i will kick us off 
Um, our first pick this week uh, is Anna Greenberg in her 30-minute alternative Pilates class from the 18th at 9.30 a.m. That was from Amajar3, who said it was a great one from Anna. We have John Hosking in his 30-minute at the club run from the 18th at 1 p.m. This came from Nurse Dina, Kathy M19, and Seglo3. Um, I... I, Amanda was mad last week because, you know, the cutoff didn't let her get it in this week. But Amanda, even though you're not here, we're still covering it this week. Um, one of our members said he's so charming and makes the work go quick. Uh, we also had Hannah Corbin in her 15 minute earth, wind and fire bar from the 18th at 7.30 PM. That was from timeout. Tammy and Amajar three said such a great bun burner, her best one yet. And then we have Logan Aldridge. He had a 30-minute EDM walk on January 19th at 7 a.m. Eastern time. This comes in from KJ Hopkins, and they say it was a very laid-back class. He had a great message about people who have helped him and how he can be helpful to people like his young friend Jack, who also has a limb length difference. Logan's positivity is so refreshing. Indeed, it is. Uh, and then we have a Jess King 30-minute pop ride on January 19th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And that comes from um, Amajar3, who says, Killer playlist in this one with Janet Jackson, Prince, and more. You, you can't go wrong with Janet Jackson and Prince. You know, <laughs> right? I like that. Um, and then we have uh, Mila Lazar 30-minute groove ride in English from January 20th at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. And they say, um, this comes from just dance lisa who says great music music and uh, chore choreography and it was in english so awesome nice well bex gentry and her 30 minute walk plus run from the 20th at 1 30 p.m this came from it's a brewing and rachel spends 24 said great high energy and she pushed me to flourish we have Cliff Dwinger and his 30-minute gospel ride from the 21st at 11 a.m. from Smith K22, who said Cliff's gospel rides are always great, and this one is in English. So it's always great to see some of the German coaches get a do an English class. Right. So, you know, not always subtitles, so a great way to check some of them out. Right. And then we have Ali Love and her 30-minute feel-good ride from the 21st at 12 p.m. This was from Rachel Spins 24 and Christina Romano. They said Leslie Odom Jr. was live writing in studio in this class, and we got to hear some of his music while he was writing live alongside us. That's cool. That's good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have a Kendall Tool 30-minute metal ride from January 22nd at noon Eastern time. This comes in from... Um, R. Perello, Hello Todd 314, and Allie 21XO. And they say, can't go wrong with Kendall's metal rides. Um, we also have a Tobias Haynes 45 minute endurance run from January 23rd at 12 noon. Um, and that came from Fleetwood Mom, who says, this class had awesome pop punk energy, very accessible, encouraging to German and non German speakers. And then we also had uh, a Kirsten Ferguson 45-minute hip-hop run from January 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It came in from Dippin' Dot 22, who says, such a fun class. Nice. And we have Kira Michelle in her 20-minute evening yoga flow from the 23rd at 7.05 p.m. That was from Amajar3, who said, great way to unwind. We also have Katie Wong in her 30-minute row boot camp, which is a lower body row boot camp from the 23rd at 9 p.m. That was from Tabata Be Hidden Me, who said, tough, but still a great burn, and of course, fun. And then finally, we have Susie Chan in our 30-minute Badwater 135 documentary run. That came from Tunder Homes, Twirling Tam, Ina Murdoch, and I put this one on here as well. Um... One of them said, this whole thing is incredible, a must take. And I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think that wraps up our show for the week. Um, you know, busy news week, but lots of stuff going on, lots of classes. So just, yeah, lots going on this week. Oh, yeah. There's a lot happening. You know, I, I actually thought originally, I was like, this is kind of a slow week this week. And then I looked at all of the things that had been happening all during the I'm, I'm, I'm like out of touch. There's a lot of stuff. 
I've been saying that a lot of weeks. Like you start the week off Monday or Tuesday, there's not much. And then all right. of a sudden, Wednesday, Thursday, everything happens. You're like, nope, not a slow right. week again. Everything then drops. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. That's always good. It's always good to yeah. have stuff to kind of talk about and then get out to the community. And, and with the stuff you do at Pillow Buddy, I mean, so many people wait for you to tell tell us what's going on, Chris. So <laughs> yeah. I try to get the news out when we can. So Right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, well, John, thanks again for uh, sitting in this week and helping us cover all the news. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Anytime. I love it. Cool. Well, yeah, I guess from me here in Atlanta, we'll see everyone next time. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton, by the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pillow Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pillow Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pillow Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.